My name is Dr Danny Elvidge and I'm Senior Lecturer for Building Physics and Services at the University of West of England, Bristol. And this is a short video to explain logarithms. The full mathematics behind logarithms is best explained in other videos and in textbooks. In this example I'm going to be talking about the logarithmic nature of sound. So I'll start off by explaining logarithms and then give you a few examples from architecture and construction. What exactly are logarithms? They are credited to the invention of John Napier, who was a Scottish mathematician, who also invented the decimal point. However, I should also point out that a Swiss mathematician called Jos Berge was using logarithms at the same time, but Napier got his publication out first. They were invented to simplify the mathematics needed for the engineering during the Industrial Revolution. They are quite complicated, but they are very useful for working with numbers with large ranges. Now there are lots of websites and videos online that try and explain logarithms but a lot of them are quite complicated and they're written from a mathematician's point of view. They use terms like function and integers and explain that logarithms are simply inverse functions. Now for many of you this could be a little complicated and intimidating so I'm going to try and explain these in as simple a way as possible in the way that I understand them. Hopefully from this you'll learn how to use them from a purely acoustics perspectives without a lot of the mathematical background. To explain logarithms from an acoustics point of view, we first need to explain why we need them. When we're working in acoustics, we are dealing with a tremendous range of energies. For instance, the energy produced by a whisper is one million millionth of a watt per metre squared. Now don't worry about what a watt per meter squared is at the moment, just know that we are dealing with a number which is one million millionths, which is otherwise one times ten to the minus twelve watts per meter squared, or zero point one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve watts per meter squared. So that's a very small number, a whisper, the threshold of hearing. Compare that to an aircraft. An aircraft will be making around 100 watts per meter squared. This is a huge range and it makes no sense to use regularly. You can't say how loud is something, well it was 0, 0.000 watts per meter squared. How much louder did it get? Well, to 48. Those numbers no longer make sense. And if you add to this that the human response to sound is non-linear, you need to use logarithms to compress that range into a sensible number. Here's how you do it. Let's look at a large range of numbers, a linear range. We'll start from 1, 10, 100, 1000, and go right up to 1000 million. This is a very large range. Too large for many of us to work. So what logarithms do is say, instead of looking at these numbers and a very, very large range, what if I looked at them in terms of another number? Now usually what we do is we look at a reference number. We choose 10. And what we say is, instead of looking at these numbers, how many tens would we need to make those numbers? For instance, how many tens do we need to make 1? We don't need any tens to make 1. We need 0. How many tens do we need to make 10? It's simple, we need one ten to make ten. But how many tens do we need to make a hundred? Well, we need two tens to make a hundred. Let me explain. We need two tens to make a hundred because ten times ten equals one hundred. How many tens do we need to make a thousand? We need three tens to make a thousand. Three tens because ten times ten times ten equals one thousand. 
And we can take this rule right up to a thousand million. How many tens would I need to make a thousand million? Well, it's, the answer is nine. Because you need nine tens to make a thousand million. Ten times 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 ten equals a thousand million. So by looking at these numbers in terms of another number, the number ten, we produce a third number. This zero, one, two, three, up to nine is called a log. The log numbers are zero, one, two, three, up to nine. We've taken a very large range, one to a thousand million, and by looking at it in terms of another number, number 10, we've made a much smaller range. So in this example, I use tens as our reference number, and that's what we call the base. We say that this is power to the base 10. So I'm saying I am taking a number, I am looking at a base number, number 10, to create a new logarithmic scale, often referred to as log 10. In engineering, we usually use logs to the base 10, and this is often called the common logarithm. It's what's assumed by the log button on your calculator. So here, on a scientific calculator, you'll see the log button. And above it, the same power to the base 10 I showed in the last section of this video. So let's look at some examples. Three log to the base 10 means 10 times 10 times 10, and that equals 1,000. So 10 to the base 3 means what number do I have to times 10 by to get 1,000? Therefore, 3 log to the base 10 equals 1,000. Let's show that on a calculator. Log of 1,000 equals 3. And conversely, 3 to the base 10 equals 1,000. I'm converting 1,000 into a logarithm base 10, which equals 3. What logarithms do is narrow a large range of numbers into a non-linear smaller range. But this means you can no longer add and subtract the logarithms using simple addition and subtraction. To add logarithms, you have to take the numbers out of the log scale add them up and then convert them back into a log form again. This is what logarithmic maths involves. So, for example, we know 3 log to the base 10 equals 1000. But if you want to add 1000 and 1000, you can't do this in log form because the log 3 plus 3 cannot be added up to make 6. This is because 6 log to the base 10 actually equals a million. Let me demonstrate that on the calculator. So we can no longer add up in the traditional scales. So in a logarithmic scale, 3 plus 3 can't equal 6 because we know that it should equal 2,000. What you have to do is convert the numbers out of the log scale, add them together, and then convert them back into the log scale again. So let me show you. 3 plus log 3 equals 2,000. It's no longer a linear scale. In a log scale, 3 plus 3 actually equals 3.3. 3. 
you're no longer dealing in a linear scale. Let me show you. So we know a logarithmic number 3 equals 1000. Therefore, 3 plus 3 must equal 2000. And it does. Log 2000 equals 3.301. And going back the other way, approximately 2000. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is once you've converted a large range of numbers into a smaller range using logarithms, you can no longer simply add and subtract. 3 plus 3 no longer equals 6. 3 plus 3 equals 3.3. .3. So if you're going to do logarithmic maths, you have to know how to convert the logarithms out of a logarithmic scale, do the addition, subtraction, multiplication, anything you wish, and then convert it back in the logarithmic scale. It's a strange way of adding things up, but if you think about sound, which is a logarithmic scale, it makes good sense. Sound is not linear. Our ears and brain deal with sound logarithmically. Let me give you an example. If you have a car stopped at a traffic light and it's producing 80 decibels, and then you have another car pull up behind it, and it too produces 80 decibels. The two added together do not produce 160 decibels. 120 decibels is the threshold of pain. When two cars pull up behind each other, they don't get twice as loud. It actually only gets a little bit louder. 80 decibels plus 80 decibels does not increase to the painful 160 decibels, actually increases to 83 decibels. It just gets a little bit louder. The calculation looks like this. The new sound level equals 10 log What this calculation is doing is converting the 80 out of the decibel scale, adding the two together, and then converting it back into the decibel scale again. And if I do this calculation on my calculator, It equals 83 decibels. So here's another example of logarithms being used, in this case of the acoustics on a building site. Let us say I have a digger, and that digger is producing 89 decibels. I then add a small forklift truck that forklift is producing 80 decibels. How loud are the two running together? Well, the equation would look like this. The level equals 10 log, the sound of the digger, plus sound level of the forklift. What this equation is doing is taking the sound levels of the digger, taking them out of the logarithmic scale, then taking the sound level of the forklift, taking out of the logarithmic scale, adding them together, and then converting it back into our logarithmic scale again. So this on the calculator would look like this. You do 10, log, that's the part which is converting your answer back into the logarithmic scale, and then you put in the sound level of the digger, 89. 
So the part of the calculation here is taking the 89, converting it out of the logarithmic scale, and that is going to be added to the 80 of the forklift taken out of the logarithmic scale. And when you press equals, you get 89.51. 89.51 decibels. And the reason this is important is because our ears cannot detect a rise below one decibel. Put simply, if you take a digger producing 89 decibels, you can drive a forklift truck producing 80 decibels right up behind it and you would have no idea it was there. This obviously has implications for safety on building sites. So we've just looked at how logarithmic sound levels can be added together. Now I'm going to look at how they can be divided and multiplied. Let's say we've got six boilers running in a boiler room and those six boilers together are producing 94 decibels. I want to know what the sound level is for just one of those boilers. For that you'd need to use the division formula. So the level would be 10 log the level of all six divided by six. So what I'm doing here in this calculation is I'm taking the 94 decibels, a logarithmic number, converting it out of the logarithmic scale, dividing it by six, and then converting it back into the logarithmic scale again. To do the calculation, you must go 10 log the 94 decibels produced by the six pumps divided by six, closing the brackets, means that one pump is producing 86.2 decibels. So that's dividing in a logarithmic scale. What if I wanted to know how much sound five of these boilers would be producing? So this is the sound level for one boiler. What would it be for five boilers? Well, this equation would look like this. It would be the level equals 10 log the sound of one of the boilers, 86.2, multiplied by five. So now we are simply using the logarithmic level of one of the boilers and timesing it by five, and that will give us, I'm just gonna to go to the calculator, 10 log, 86.2, the value of one of those boilers, multiplied by five. The answer is 93.1, or 1.8, which is 93.2 decibels. So that's looked at the use of division and multiplication in a real-world example. The last example will be looking at subtraction. In this case, you're in a factory with a ventilation system running, and the volume in the factory is 78 decibels. The factory owner says this is too loud and it's the ventilation system causing the problems. The question is, how do you find out how loud the ventilation system is.
Now, the easiest way to do this would be to turn everything else in the factory off so you can test what the fan alone would be producing. However, the factory owners won't allow you to do this. It will slow down production too much. So what you can do instead is take the measurement for the factory running with the fan on, 78, and then turn the fan off. This then produces a new value of 73. The question we need to find out is how loud is the ventilation system? For this, we'll need to use a subtraction. So we have the level equals 10 log 10, the value when the fan is on, 78, minus the value when the fan is off, 73, and there you are. This means we are taking the value with the fan on, 78 decibels, converting it out of the decibel scale, and then we are subtracting the value when the fan is off. This should just leave the noise produced by the fan. On the calculator, this should look like this. 10 log the value with the fan running minus the value when the fan has been switched off and that answer should give you the value of the fan on its own. 76.3 decibels. So in this video, I've shown you how we use a logarithmic scale to narrow a large range of values. And that once this is done, you can no longer add, subtract, divide in the same linear form of mathematics. 6 plus 6 no longer equals 12. Therefore, we need a new form of maths using logarithms. In this case, we need to convert the logarithm scale back into the original scale, use add, subtract, whichever you wish to use, then convert your answer back into logarithms.